to Wizzle. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so first of all, let me start off. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, can you, you know, I'm just general, how did you get your start in music? Man, I gotta say, like, I was rapping since third grade. I used to listen to Run DMC and LL and be in the crib and sneaking and listen to the rap with the bad words and Easy E and BC Boys and all that. And then I remember when they brought out Yamaha's and Casio keyboards, it was real in style. But the thing is, I had like an urge to really create, but I never wanted to really learn how to play music like that. So it was like, that was stagnating my growth because my mother was always like, well, if you can't play, you don't need the type of keyboard that can sequence and all that type of shit. So um, once I was like in seventh grade, I was like really into drawing and I wanted to like design video games. So I got this Amiga computer, that, which is a really good price for all that it did. It was um, $500 and it had like all type of graphic program and everything. Hold on. Hey, come on, man. Come on, what up, dog? Yeah, just, I mean, whatever y'all, just, just stay, just don't distract my story, man. Okay. So, yeah, that's. Do I have to uh, start my story over again? No. You, no, dog, you, you, nothing's live, so it's like you pick up where you. Okay, you definitely got to take me to Boston Market or something after this, man. <laughs> um, okay. America, y'all have to see me. Y'all have to get used to this face. Don't, ain't that what everybody say? Delete that. You get used to me. You don't know, see him next year. Um, so you can just pick up. <laughs> all right, so, um, yeah, so when us, those keyboards came out, oh, I had my computer and I was trying to draw on it, and then I got a sound program. Like somebody bootlegged the copy of the disc with me or the sound program. I found myself just wanting to work on that all the time. Then I found myself like running home from school because I have an idea like looking at the clock, looking at 2.30, like, yo, man, I want to get this beat down. But I didn't even know anything about sampling. And I was 14 years old. I went to Chuck Levin's out in uh, Maryland and they told me, yo, uh, people... Yo, that do the type of music you do, they sample. I had no idea. I was just be trying to, I didn't know why my stuff didn't sound exactly like the stuff on the radio. Then, but the sampler was like, yo, $2,000. And for somebody that's 14 years old, only getting an allowance, that was like $8 million. My father was like, yo, maybe you could save your allowance. I had like $20 a week. Like, how am I going to save up for $2,000? So I'm just working with that. Then I found out you can get like a little 8 bit sample for the computer. So I got that. And of course, the first thing I wanted to sample was James Brown. So I think back then I used to try to make beats like full force. And um, you know, in the middle of a song, you had to have a go where you could like really start doing your running man real, real, real hard too. So um, back, uh, I started making beats and my beats started getting nice. And then my mother came home one day and she was like, yo, you ever heard of Common Sense? I was like, yeah, I heard Common Sense. He got a song called Take It Easy on the radio right now. He cold, right? He's like, well, I know. Um, a friend of mine said her son produces for him. I was like, oh, word, you know what I'm saying? So uh, she's like, yeah, I'll give you his number. His name is Dion. His rap name is like Immense Mountain, Immense something. Uh, his name was Immense Slope back then. It was a really bad name. We had real bad names. I'm not even gonna go into all the bad names I had. So now I went over his crib and I remember walking in there, it's like walking in Def Jam now, like walking in the Kevin's office or something. Like that's the closest you could possibly get to the industry because they actually had something that you heard on the radio and it was dope, you know what I'm saying? So I was over there, I'm playing my beats. I had the fast beats, like what I was telling you before, and Common came in like, she Dean, that's what I want, I want some fast beats. I think that around that time, he still wanted to rap like and do the Big Daddy Kane stuff, but he didn't even realize the style that they was doing is the style that we do today. Like, they was using the intimate friends and the singing, the dum, 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 ooh, 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 and the speeding up the singing. I remember Dion was like, yo, I give you some tips on sampling. He had an SP-1200. I'd never seen none of the real equipment that, like, at that time, who was hot? Like, Pete Rock, Lost Professor, Beat Nuts, No ID. And i never even found him. I, I, I hadn't even stepped into a guitar center like that at that point. So he showed me how to sample records. He said, what you do to save on sample time is you speed them up. Thus is the style that we use and that everybody is using right now with the sped up samples. So I used to be sweating, I mean bugging them. I'm trying to word myself with the least amount of profanity as possible. Bugging them to death. And 
You know, he changed his numbers about 100 times with me, but I always figured out how to get him. I'd be knocking on his window while he's with his girl. So then I had to go out on my own at that point. He taught me a lot, but I had to take a, a point myself to just listen to the music that was out there and try to get my music as good as that. But all along, I'm always rapping. I had groups, and I was always the weakest rapper out of the people in the group. You know what I'm saying? It would always be like somebody who really had it, but they just didn't have a passion for it. But I had to, every night I was working, every night I just, like, it wasn't nothing that was gonna stop me. Like, people would look up and they're like, yo, I just heard of Kanye. Like, I've been doing this since really, like, yo, telling my teachers, like, man, I, I might not even have to turn to my homework this year, because I'm be finna be signed this year. You know what I'm saying? Back in seventh grade. I mean, I told my gym teacher, Freshman year, like, man, I ain't coming to gym class no more. I'm finna be signed this year. She gonna come to me senior year, like, yo, what was up with that record deal? Ha 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 ha. So, so tell me, <laughs> let, me, let me ask you, at what point, you know, you did, the, you did the rhyming thing and the production. How did you, how did you decide, at what point, and how did you decide which way you was gonna go first? Which mean, I don't know, I didn't decide, they decided for me, man. I always wanted to rap on my beats. It just so happened that people would hear this stuff and they'd be like, yo, um, do you have to rap on that? Well, if you don't, I'll just buy the beat from you. You know what I mean? So basically, I was always a rapper. It just it was a chance that, now let me word this very well because you might want to use it as a quote and I don't want to be slurred over it. Okay. I was always rapping. And it just so happened that really, really, Phenomenal rappers got to rap on my beats before I got a chance to. So that pushed me into the classification of a producer. But I'm a rapper from the heart. Like, I got something to say, you know what I'm saying? And people are like, yo, what you finna rap about? You never so crack out your house or put a gat to a mouth and put your fist to your spouse. So how you gonna move the crowd? I bet a thousand that you get booed out. You know what I'm saying? Like now, the rap game has changed so much. You go from trial Card Quest to Onyx to um, Swiss Beast to Rockefeller to the Bad Boy and so many different sounds and it's, you know, it's like almost playing like double dust, like where do you get in the game? You're like trying to like, yo, how does my style fit into what I'm doing right now? So I'm lucky that I had the opportunity to have a plateau to stand on now that my style of beats is the most popular style on the radio right now. Now that I turn on and hear beats that I could have sworn I did them, but I just didn't get no check for it. That's a Swiss beat quote right there. I could have what I did to be. I just didn't get no check for it. So now that my style is now it's like the world can accept me. It's a lot of people, it's like you just got to get in where you fit in. You never know how you get in. You might be somebody's guy and you end up being better than that person and shining over that person. And you might be an a intern or it's, it's like the question is how do you get into this industry? How do you get into the, the shoes I'm in right now? I'm just happy to be here. But as an artist, like, I'm, I'm not finna waste this opportunity. I'm finna take this to the next level. Like, I remember when Pac first got out of jail and said, yo, man, Snoop, Snoop is killing the game, man. I'm finna take Death Row to the next level. I'm like, what? Tupac finna do better than Snoop? Come on now. But now look, and really that's how I feel, man. I'm a Gemini, man. It's in my heart, man. I'm, a, <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna tell nobody. My mother says star shine from, his, from inside, so I'm not gonna sit up in here and be like, yo, man, just look at me, da -da, and then do the kid and play or something to let y'all know that I <laughs> what I'm finna do, but. Let me ask you, yeah. um, well, when you, you said that, you know, you, you was in like a couple of groups and they always considered you to be like, you know, everybody else to be the better out of the head. Um, like what, what inspired you to keep going? You know. Man, I just had the hunger. Like, my mother never raised me to ask for a handout. Like, a lot of people that got into this game, they walking around with somebody else's chain on or driving somebody else's car and didn't even pay for the shoes that they got on their feet. My mother had a decent job, you know what I'm saying? But she gave me a little allowance, $15, $20 a week, and I had to go out and get my own job at age 15. Matter of fact, at 14, I was cutting hair in a barbershop, so it was instilled in me to go out and just get it. And that, that made be, me be a leader around a lot of black men. Like, even my father had, I had two fathers in my life. I had my real father that I was in contact with and my stepfather that stayed there with my mother. And everybody was instilling that responsibility in me that nothing in life is given to you. A lot of times, I feel like a lot of people just rapping because it's free. You know what I'm saying? What you got to do, especially now with Jay writing his rhymes in his head, people ain't got to pay for paper no more. Now everybody just feel like they finna just... You know what I'm saying? Come out and be a, a, a rapper out the blue. At least with a production, you had to go up and figure out a way to get your, your equipment up and 
go buy records and do different things. So I'm talking about the work ethic is so serious. And up here at Baseline, up, up at The Rock, people work. The work ethic is crazy. That's why I feel like we, we killing the game right now. That's why we cutting edge. That's why we on Flex every week, just crushing labels. That's why all you hear practically is The Rock. You know what I'm saying? Hey, let me let me just uh just to keep it in you know in the back history. How you know you speaking a lot about your parents like so how supportive were they of this career you're trying to pursue in music? Well, I don't think my father really understood or thought that this would be the one hobby that I really do because you know what I'm saying one second I'm Michael Jordan the next second I'm who who who's the freestyle champion that got his own uh, Dave Murez or something like that the biker one second I'm him. Next second, I'm a swimmer. I'm a professional diver. Like, I was just a shorty. I was doing a bunch of stuff. I was creative. Next second, I'm Michelangelo. So he probably didn't realize how serious I was about it because every little kid running around and write raps. But, man, it's like I just loved it too much. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I was just always trying to figure out a way for me to be able to express myself. And rap was the best way to express what, what was on your mind. Me and my father sit up and talk about a lot of issues that need to be brought up. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people that have that instilled in them don't know how to word it in a way where the public could accept it. So now that I got this stamp on me, I got the back of the most deaf, Kwali, Jay-Z. I got every premier artist back of me saying, dog, listen to what he's saying. I feel like I just got a really good opportunity. And I'm not, I'm not finna let them down. I'm definitely not finna let my city down because Chicago right now, it's like we got a lot of good artists that are just waiting for somebody to just break through so everybody else could just, you know, walk through the door at that point. And mm -hmm. before you before you met, like, you know, some of the dudes we just named, and even, like, the person, you know, even, like, maybe the first real big dude, like, how did you get your music out there? How did you how did you get your name? Like, how did you get her? Man, I was doing beats for free, 99. You don't know how many times I heard somebody say, um, yo, what's gonna happen is you just gonna get paid when I get paid because my cousin, no dude at this record label, and yo, they just looking for a Chicago act, and like, I went through all that, man. Do you know how many times I carried my keyboard um, over to the studio tracking some shit for somebody that was only trying to pay me $200 for the beat, but they only had $80 on them, and don't you remember when I just bought you lunch yesterday, and you know what I'm saying? So. I, I mean, I paid my dues, man. I was 14 years old, Karen, uh, trying to do beat tapes. I remember back in grammar school, we used to have rap groups, and I had to write the raps for all the rap groups. Um, I remember this one time, um, we was trying to do a talent show. This is where I learned, pick your audience, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to figure out who you were actually rapping to because I had my music teacher. It was my favorite teacher in the world, Miss Morgan. And you know what I'm saying? She was like, it's kind of like the Lane Bryant size or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And we got up there and we, we think we finna perform Fat Girls Are Back for the talent show. So of course we didn't make it. And at that point, I was like, um, you know what I'm saying? Figure out who you rapping to. <laughs> what, what, was your, what, what was your, like, your teenage life like? Yeah. I know I'm giving, I be going off of tangents, but I'm feeling like y'all could just use little clips of that, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how you go going to word it, because he asked me a question. I know I give you a basic answer, and then I just go into some other, like, interesting shit, but, um, so, I mean. Like around the time when you was really trying to. When I was trying to get on, I remember one time I got so into hip hop that I had an afro with no lining. Um, I had, like, one of them Gap Life Preserver vests. I had some Reeboks with fat laces, and I ain't even had an old Reeboks, because in Chicago, we didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? It was hard to find them. I could find the fat laces, but I couldn't find like the official, like the old Pumas or whatever. So I was just trying to just really be and live hip hop. Then I figured out, like, man, I ain't really getting no girls with this. This is not really working for me, right? So I think that is the difference of, like, you go to hip hop parties in Chicago, and wouldn't nobody be dancing with no girls. It'd be a dude doing a helicopter finna kick some girls in the head. They get mad if some girls start dancing or something. That's when I figured out, like, yo, maybe whatever definition that everybody here got of hip hop, maybe that's not what hip hop is for me. I love the music. So then everybody try to separate now and say that you're not hip hop because you go out and buy some jewelry. No, having jewelry is not a basis of hip hop. Look at Rakim, you know what I'm saying? Look at Run DMC. You trying to tell me they not hip hop? 
It's a, okay, you trying to tell me because most deaf and quality don't buy jewelry, that they are more hip hop than Jay-Z or what's quote unquote real hip hop. I feel like my album, the perspective that I'm going to speak from, I feel like I'm going to bridge the gap. I'm going to be one of the people that help bridge the gap with hip hop. Because I'm going to talk from the perspective of just being honest, like, yo, um, I always said if I rap, I say something significant, but now I'm talking about money, hoes, and rims again. Like, I want to do what's right, you know what I'm saying? But I'm a human being. Like, okay, I got songs like Jesus Walks With Me, but then I got songs that's like, I need to know. He's down to do whatever, down to get it jumping, down to get topless. Maybe I need to know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm a man, I'm a human being. People feel like an artist, they be like, yo, if you're an artist, um, you can only rap about this one subject. You have to stand for this specifically. I'm gonna stand for everything I've seen in my life. And I'm gonna try to express that to y'all the best I can. And I feel like I'm creative enough that I'm gonna make it work, you know what I'm saying? I know nobody has ever stood up and said, yo, man, let me actually show you that it's more than one side to me. I don't know if I really believe in that Gemini stuff and all the constellations and all that. Like, I, I really believe in God, like, but, I know that it's more than one side to me. I know on one end, when I get a check in, sometimes I be thinking like, yo, man, I'm finna go and get this um, chain off layaway from Jacobs right now. I know sometimes I have some money in my pocket and I might give a bum $20 instead of just $2. I know that I'll go to church with my grandparents and really try to hear what the word is or what they trying to tell me or really try to understand about religion or, or what do I want to pick. So I'm confused as a black man. A lot of times artists come into the aspect that they not confused about who they are or whatever. And then you always hear about, man, I love the album, but she a hypocrite or he's a hypocrite because da 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 You know what I'm saying? It's like if somebody talks about killing somebody, does that make them a hypocrite if they decide to go to church? Or if they go to church and they actually kill somebody in a rhyme or you know what I'm saying? Because people don't kill. If people kill as many people in a rhyme, you know what I'm saying? It'll be like some Vietnam type shit. But do you feel that, um, cause you know New York is <clears throat> like you know hip hop is like it's pretty big worldwide, mm -hmm. but its roots pretty much trace back to to New York. Do you feel like you being from Chicago does that like you think that that's to your advantage? Cause you you know there's very few MCs coming out of Chicago. Man, I feel like. Coming from Chicago is definitely an advantage. I feel like everything that anybody ever said in life would be a disadvantage to me, I'm gonna make it my advantage. When I was playing basketball, everybody said I was too short, I'm killing them with the scoops, you know what I'm saying? Everybody says, you can't rap because you're a producer. Okay, oh, I ain't hear that beat. Oh yeah, I know, I produced it. <laughs> I just rapped on it before you got a chance to hear it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna use everything that everybody says that I can't do or, and I'm gonna flip it to the positive. Like, I look at everything as a glass half full and half empty. And it's like, I'm the type of person, I don't hold grudges. Like, one of my best friends made a song dissing me. And I looked at all the positive in the situation. I'm like, look, that's probably my name or more. He came to me like, yo, I'm sorry. Like, I feel like, Maybe a lot of the rules of hip hop, like a lot of the aggression and the negativity that people have towards people, maybe I'm not hip hop because of that. Because of where my heart is or because I won't confide to what people say. A lot of stuff, I feel like 90%, 10% of life is what happens to you, 90% is how you react to it. And hip hop is based a lot in the past is people reacting negatively to situations. You know, it's like, I'm a, I'm a, Listen to things that my father told me and my stepfather told me and walk like that and try and try to walk in a way that I could look to God the next day. If it's something I got to repent for, it's something I got to repent for, it's something that as a man, you know what I'm saying? Because I got things that I'm addicted to. Like I like to be in a club, you know what I'm saying? And do the club thing and stuff. But also it's like, I know, I know it's like this light, this light that I, I had to follow, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I'm not easily influenced. Like when I was in kindergarten, people used to tell me stories like they'd come and all the kindergartners would be following me around the class. Cause I'm gonna be the one that say no. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times I feel like if people don't agree with what you're saying, then they be like, oh man, fuck him, he a bitch. You know what I'm saying? He he in one of da 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 da. 
It's all, it's all the same theory what your parents used to tell you a long time ago. Like, yo, if he jump off the bridge, would you jump off also? I'm telling you, I ain't jumping off no bridges. Go ahead, dog. It's all good. All right, dog. I'm just be up here. I'm just be up here living right now. You know what I'm saying? Don't move to New York. I say, I say one line and be like, um, how you go to New York? But you ain't never took a tour there. But you ain't know you gotta be rich just to be poor there. There's a song I got on my album called Dream Killers that basically talks about how people just try to just down you. Like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Since DV tape is not that expensive, I'm gonna go ahead and spit you one of the raps from it. It, um, it goes, um, I'm finna get on this TV and put it down. I ain't finna let these light skinned dudes come back in style. I'm finna current. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bleep that out. Right. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm finna get on this TV and put it down. I ain't finna let these light skinned dudes come back in style. I'm finna turn this class clown shit to crazy G's. They told my mom I think he bipolar, had ADD. I told him what, what I wanna do. I wanna be a baller. The dream spoilers are for ya. Hating on you till they man's on the call list. Old folks said he never make it off the corner. They out a virus that corrupts the soul. They out a cubic zirconia inside the 10 karat Go that get green on you when you get green on them. You gotta wash your hands of them, get clean on them. Somebody told me success is the best revenge. So they gonna be fucked up when you do your thing on them and hold your plaques high like who would have thought and tell them <clears throat> thank you for your no support. They are the dream killers. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of concepts that people ain't never touched on in rap. You know, I really like Lauryn Hill album and music album because they're not afraid to talk about issues that people really go to go through. You know what I'm saying? Whatever happened to real life? You know what I'm saying? Whatever happened to um, you know what, girl? Um, I can't really afford this movie. We gotta go Dutch. I know I got jewelry on and everything, but uh, whatever happened to you know? I was in the club and I ain't really get no girls like. Like four girls this you know what I'm saying? But I guess that's like anti hip hop, right? Because hip hop was always about front and always about acting like I feel like that's the black mentality anyway, because since we ain't never had nothing, if we get a little something, we gotta show it to prove something. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like the concept of walking in the store and you look like a shoplifter unless you got something on. You feel like you gotta wear jewelry just to get the same service. I I say I say in a rap, getting green make you almost white. Let me, let me let me ask you what what would you consider um, at what point in your life was uh was like the breaking point where you feel that you finally you know you got you got something accomplished like you got you got your name out there like you, you're in the game. Man, I still feel like I ain't in the game. Why well, I need to be? You ain't never broke. Maybe maybe once I win, see. Then I look at these you hear first, and people say exactly the stuff I want to say, like, we run the Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> but, okay, the breaking point, I feel like there's no, there's no real breaking point. You have to just struggle every day because when you do something good, it, you have so much on your back, you have so much to prove at that point. So now you're trying to just move forward. Like, I could say my breaking point was when I heard I'm Bad by LL Cool J or something. Okay, I'll go back. Um, I feel like you had to struggle. I feel like you had to struggle. Uh, ask me a question again. At what point, at, at what point in, you know, would you say in your career, do you feel that, like, you know, maybe a track you produced would finally got, to, got in the right person's hands or maybe, you know, or the right person might have heard your music, just in general? Okay. I can say different things that helped me to help me along my career, but I feel like to this point, I still feel like I haven't broken where I wanted to break. Because in my heart, there's so much stuff I want to say to the world. And the most I've been able to do up to this point is maybe suggest a couple lines to some people. It's like I really got a lot on my mind. Like I see stuff and I'll be like, yo, the way I word it, it's, I'm, I'm not using rap as a, a way that I think I'm going to get paid or something. I'm, I'm using it as an opportunity to really say some stuff that I think needs to be heard, that I think people will enjoy. I'm trying to give back. I want Q-Tip to hear my shit and be like, 
thought and I could listen to this album every day. I want to give back to when I used to listen to Mob Deep's album on the train with my headphones on and that's what made the train ride feel like I was in a Benz because I just had that album in my, you know what I'm saying? It didn't matter what car I was in. It didn't matter if I was walking the street. It didn't matter if I was in the rain or what happened because I had the headphones on. I had that hip hop in my ears. Like it's done so much for my life. So until I feel like I could really, really give back, you know what I'm saying? Nah, I feel, but definitely like I gotta always show love to like Rockefeller, D Dot, Jermaine Dupri. It's it's a lot of people that's helped me in my life, but maybe now Rockefeller is finally letting me get to the point that I've been waiting to get to my entire life since third grade. Where now it seemed to be like you said, you know, you're not just in this for the money, you know, you're in this for the love of it. At what along the line? Where along the lines did you know that this is something that you wanted to really pursue to make your career? Man, I knew I wanted to be a rapper. Like, well, I knew it was like, yo, I'm not gonna do anything else. Like, I say I was 19 years old and I was in college and I had demos and I produced a couple tracks for people that actually had albums coming out. They weren't on major labels. They weren't finna go gold or anything. And I had my demo and I knew it was getting hot and I was freestyling and I knew I was ripping, ripping niggas down in a freestyle. I knew I was crushing them. I knew I was crushing everybody on the beats. So I had this song, I'm not even going to say what the title of the song is because I'm not even going to let it get used against me, but I had this song and it was like a single sound of song, I guess, um, and this dude from Columbia, I forgot the a rs name, that walked it in, ended up flying me out to New York. You know, we had the whole VIP, the limo, we was eating upstairs at the Sony Bill. I'm walking to Sony Bill, like, oh my God, I'm walking in there every day now, it's nothing, but back then, coming from Chicago, they're like, yo, you finna get signed to Columbia Records. At that time, they had Nas and the Fugees. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, I'm finna follow in their footsteps. I have my, I have my gear ready. My bucket is right. Check. You know what I'm saying? I had everything. Yo, I had the, um, I had like the hat, like the old man hat where we used to wear. I was poloed up. You know what I'm saying? We used to do polo hard, man. Shout out to TJ Maxx and Marshalls, man. Thank you. You saved my life. <laughs> yo, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> so we went up in there and then I told, see, this type of story, I can't even tell on camera like this because it's too many names of all. I have to change the names to protect the innocent. Um, I told um, the a and there, I was like, yo, man, I'm going to be bigger than Michael Jackson. I'm going to be bigger than Jermaine Dupri. What? Okay. For a long time, people were telling me, man, if you go out to New York, you could really get your music on, you could really kill the game out there. But you know, you got your family out there, I got my girl out there, I have my group out there. I felt like I had a responsibility to the, to the city to stay there and help try to make it blow. But then it's like, it was straw after straw, until the straw broke the camel's back. I had two artists, one artist ended up leaving me, getting signed and didn't get any beats from me. Then I had another artist and I signed him to my company and then he ended up leaving. And when he was telling me he was leaving, my landlord came upstairs and was like, uh, you have too much traffic in your house, you're evicted. So I was like, man, at that point, if I wasn't ready to leave by then, so I, I really thank God. That's another one of the situations where I knew that it was a light at the end. Automatically when that happened, I said, oh, I see what's happening. God don't want me to be here no more. So I got grabbed all my stuff up, just threw it in a U-Haul. I didn't even tell my landlord I was leaving. Like, cause you had been on some nitpicking, probably would try to take my whole security deposit and all that. And I just drove to New York. I hadn't even seen my apartment. I ended up driving, I, I got an apartment in Newark. So you know if I went to Newark, I definitely hadn't seen where I was moving. And earlier, like two months before that, I was in a car accident where my expedition had flipped over three times. And like, you know, I guess, it was meant for me to be here or something for me to walk away from that. So that was a blessing. So I was out here, I didn't have a car. So I used to just take the New Jersey Transit and I'd pack up all my stuff, pack up all my dats and put them in a bag and just walk over here to baseline. And that was the key right there, being able to walk up in the baseline and play these rappers, these beats. And I remember it was Beanie Siegel's birthday and I came and I played a bunch of like soul beats. Like we had soul beats here and there, but I had a bunch that I was building up. Like, 
just like the, from the success of Can't Be Life. I was like, I need to make some more stuff in this vein right here. Um, so I'm playing Beanie some beats and he get the smile I'm like, yeah, it's hot. You know what I'm but he had to go somewhere. I don't know, he was going somewhere for his birthday. So then Hove came in. I remember he had a Gucci hat on like um, the Fisherman joint and hip hop, my manager, who definitely saved my life, uh, was like, yo, play that one beat for, for Hove. And it came on, dun, dun, dun. and he was listening to it like, oh, it's crazy right here. Then they got to the chorus, and the chorus was like, ain't no love in the heart of the city. Dun, dun, dun. And he's like, oh, 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 he's doing his face like that. And then he's like, oh, play the next beat, play the next beat. I played another beat. He was listening to it like, yo, man, you a soulful dude. And everything that Hove is saying is like in stone. Like, I, I will never forget none of these words because I'm off the train. I'm from Chicago. I got $10 in my pocket right now. And I'm just having an opportunity to play these beats. So I'm, you know what I'm saying? I've had different so-called hit records and everything up to that, that point. But at this point, it's like I'm just, this is like the moment of truth for me right here. So now I play another beat. Then I play another beat. Then I played this one beat, and it was like, never, 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 never change. I never change. Yo, he took his hat down. He's like, ooh. <laughs> like that. I was like, yo, maybe you like him. Maybe hold my like, body's beat. <laughs> so um, he was like, yo, put them joints on CD. And then he left out, right? I was like, okay, I'm putting these joints on CD. Let's see what happened. So then um, two weeks later, the blueprint was finished, right? So. Um, Basically, at that point, everything started rolling. Everybody's like, yo, man, I heard you had half the Blueprint album. I heard you did half a Jay-Z's album. I couldn't even believe it myself at the point when it was happening. Then I started connecting. I knew my people dead prayers. I knew just different people. And my guy, my dog, 88 Keys, one night said he's having a rapper come up here. And just to play him some beats, he had to play. So dude walks to the door and is most deaf. So I'm like, oh. So I didn't have no beats on me at that time. I think I was trying to rap for him. He was like, yo, whatever, whatever. I was trying to say, I was trying to say a rap over a beat because I'm like, I want, I want most of them to know I can rap. You know what I'm <laughs> and it was had a real, real week over the beat. I was rapping it over. I was like, man, I should have picked a better rap. Because when you meet a rapper, I was in the same shoes that somebody that walk up to me now or walk up to any of these rappers where you got, you got one opportunity to say your best rap that you think is going to impress this specific rapper the most. You know what I'm saying? And, that didn't work, you know what I'm saying, whatever I was spitting. But then he's like, yo, we got beats. I'm like, yo, man, I'll play you beats. And I was telling him about the takeover because he got Jack Johnson. So he was really into rock stuff. I was like, yo, I got some more stuff like that. I ain't had nothing else like that. You know what I'm saying? But I went and made some more stuff. So then I think maybe a week later, I played some beats for most. A bunch of like joints that I had that was in that vein, you know what I'm saying, of stuff that I thought he liked. Next thing you know, most Def got five beats. I'm saying so. Then I go to the studio to play most some beats one day, uh, and he wasn't there. And this dude was in the hallway. He was like, "Yo, you here for most?" I looked up. It was Kwali. He's like, "Yo, man, what's up? You, 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 Kanye West?" I was like, "Yeah, dog." Uh, he's like, "Yo, you can play me some beats." I'm like, um, "Well, I had a CD here for most." He's like, "I'm gonna come and just play these beats right quick, dog." So um, I walked in. I played some beats. Now, I got Quality's first single. <laughs> I got three joints on this album, you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was happening like, I felt like God was just walking me. God kicked me in the ass to get out of the shot. God put me in situations where it wasn't like I was going out like, yo, let me try to meet these artists. Like, I wasn't even thinking about who I was. All the time, really, I was just thinking about how I was going to get my record deal. You know what I'm saying? So it just so happened that he was putting me in situations where I was able to eat and able to build these relationships because I feel like most helped me get my record deal. Like, I did a song with him, which is my first single, and it's a two-word joint. That's crazy. It's me, him, and, and Freeway. And I had a bunch of crazy songs for it. But when Dame heard that, he was like, yo. And I remember I first heard, because I was supposed to go to a bunch of different labels, man. Like, it got to the point after Blueprint, a bunch of labels wanted me. You know what I'm saying? And... The Rock, it always never seemed like I could be at The Rock because of my subject matter and everything. And he's not in the same exact vein as the rappers that y'all used to hear. But now we expanding, you know what I'm saying? And, and I expanded the music I was doing because I was doing very creative stuff. But then I'd be giving Hove and Bleak and Beanie all these gutter beats that people really like. 
So it's like, why not just rap over the beats that people like? You know what I'm saying? And still say what I'm talking about. So one day I'm playing this stuff. I just I just want to play some songs of a bass line and Cam was in the studio just to see like, man, is, is my stuff worthy of playing it around these people yet? Because people used to diss myself like, man, you always pick whack beats to rap over, da, da, da. you trying to be too different. Um, so I played it. Then Dame heard it. He was like, yo, okay, play another one, play another one, play another one. I played another one. He's like, yo, yo, it's not even whack. It's not whack. Actually, it's kind of dope. Actually, it's kind of hot. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of hot. Yo. Yo, you ain't signed with Capital yet, did you? I was like, no, I ain't signed with him yet. He's like, yo. Okay. Let's play another one. So I played another one. He's like, yo, yo. Oh, Cam, Cam, what you think, though? You can do, we can do like a chronic. We can do like a, a, a East Coast chronic, though. He can, dog. See, see, he could be like, and then he started just going into the whole the rest of what my career is about to be right now. And the difference, like Dame was like, yo, it could be this or that, but then he could just rap. He rap like a regular rap. He rap like a real rap. He rap better than the average rap. You know what I'm saying? So now, because of hip hop, G, the blueprint, and Dame, I'm over here with the opportunity to get my music out, which is what I wanted since third grade. You know what I'm saying? What, 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 what was the what was what would you say was the first record that probably caught everybody's attention? That that was that was played on the I feel like the first record where I really got recognition for was the truth. Even though it wasn't a great commercial success, it's like I just really got that respect. Cause I always wanted respect for my music. Like I told you, man. It's the real thing right here, man. I'm not trying to do this for a check, you know what I'm saying? So the truth mean a lot to me. Then that was a great record because it also formed my relationship with Rockefeller. Then the next joint was Can't Be Life. Then after the Can't Be Life, I had all these joints, but I wasn't selling no beats. It was like, it was, after I moved out to New York and started getting things going, I got the joints on the blueprint. I remember I came in the studio one day at Hove and listened to all the songs. Because all he does, he, he records the songs in like five minutes, and then for the rest of the day, he just makes people come over and listen to them. I'm like, yeah, look how I'm killing y'all. <laughs> so um, basically, he, um, he was about to leave out the room. He had played the songs. He's like, yo, after this song, Guru, uh, I'm going to the lounge. Uh, I was like, yo, I got one beat to play. I got to play you this beat. I got to play you this beat. So then he's like, okay. You know what I'm saying? You did good so far. You know what I'm saying? You gave, you gave me six joints so far. That's blazing. So I'll go ahead and listen to it out. That, I, I guess that's what he was thinking. He didn't say that. He was just like, okay, play the beat, man. So I put it on. He just started bobbing his head to it. Like, let me give you one of them looks, like, <laughs> that's how you know you got a heat rock. Let me give you that right there. <laughs> so then um, maybe about two or three minutes later, I don't know, you know, it was like this. He just tapped me on the shoulder. He said, H to the is O, V to the is A, for shizzle, my dizzle used to dribble down a B A. <laughs> so, so I went to the bathroom, right? I called my mom and said, Mom, we about to make it. We really going to make it this time. It's about to be on now. <laughs> so then, yeah, this song. And then we have a chorus for a long time. So then Tone, Trackmaster Tone came in. And we had different chords. We was going back and forth. I had an idea. He had an idea. And track, Trackmaster Tone heard the beginning. He was like, yo, this was the beginning for the chorus. That's the chorus. And Ho was like, nah, I don't want to make no more name choruses. So, um... Tone was like, nah, just have a girl sing over it. Then he started like, oh, got up and said, this is the point. I'm like, see, that's why you make the big bucks. That's why you make the big bucks. Then he ran. Then, it, then we had to figure out what, what, what was all the words going to be. Because all we had was for Sizzle Money as we used to dribble down the VA. So he just, he's like, H to the S on V. So two minutes later, we trying to come up with the in-between words, right? He said, that's the anthem. Get your damn hands up. I said, oh. So I went to the DuPont registry, right? So I started picking out cars of what I was going to get, like when it came out, which I did get. Like when it finally came out, I did have to go purchase some stuff. Excuse me, 
most equally. I apologize. I I purchased foreign vehicles and. <laughs> I, I remember the first time that he, that, he, that he even previewed that joint was at the BDT Awards. Right. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. Like, how did okay. that make you feel? Man, that felt. You know exactly what that felt like. That felt like on five heartbeats when they heard they saw on the radio and I wasn't even sure that he was going to do that so I had no idea it wasn't even tracked it was two tracked it was pro tool at the time he said yo I want to do a new song ladies and gentlemen it's all me today it came on I was like oh my god I think I was on the phone with my girl and then she just started screaming like on five heartbeats like ah! <laughs> we got we shopping uh, <laughs> so um after that Man, all kind of phone calls, man, two ways. It was just, it was his own at that point. And all along, though, I'm trying to figure out, like, man, how, how I'm gonna get my rap career out here, man? I ain't for the couple of where the rap is as good as his ace is. It is or nothing, you know what I'm saying? Because he a vet in the game, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no new, new dudes just coming out the box making that because if you've been in the game a long time, you've seen so much. You know what I'm saying? Your experience, you go from all, everything that you have from being on the block and, doing whatever you had to do to see in the entire world. So how's a new artist or a 19 year old artist gonna come in and outdo that? So I said, look, I can't talk about what he's talking about. I gotta talk about something from here instead of trying to compete with him. Let me just try to find something that ain't none of these rappers touching on yet. Like I got a song that's called Self Conscious. When, when did a hip hop artist ever make a song called Self Conscious? You know what I'm saying? And I'll be like, I say, like, I start with the girl part. I say, man, I promise, she's so self-conscious. She has no idea what she's doing in college. That major that she majored in don't make no money, but she won't drop out her pants or look at her funny. Now, nah, tell me that ain't insecure. The concept of school seems so secure. Sophomore three years ain't picked a career. She like, fuck it, I'll just stay down her and do hair, because that's enough money to buy her a few pairs of new airs because her baby daddy don't really care. She's so precious with the peer pressure. Couldn't afford a car, so she named her daughter Alexis. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That line was just too good. That line was too good. That line was too good. You see what I'm saying? See? It's not no regular producer rap. I told y'all that before, man. What? So how did, you, how did you get people like, you know, like your peers, like Jay and all the other dudes, to take you serious that you rhyme because you know you're bringing them a lot of heat with the beats you know and here you are trying to push like you know you being an artist how did you how did how did they take that man it's just persistence man after a while like like i wasn't just rapping for everybody like bleak didn't even know i could rap until i was about to have a deal then it's like when i spit they like, oh, Kanye, he rock. I can't even believe this. I can't believe dude that make beats this good can actually rap this good. Like, I remember I was working with Mocha. She was like, yo, it's crazy. It's like, he rap just as good as he makes beats. I've never seen this before. <laughs> Man, on the real, I, I wish I did rap as good as I make beats. Hopefully, the more I practice. Because if I rapped as good as I made beats, then I'd be doing six micas every time. You know what I'm saying? Does it, does it worry you at all that, that, you know, you being such a big producer? And, you know, and there's a lot of producers who come out, you know, who, who like to dabble into, you know, they like the mic, but they're not really artists. Like, you was always an artist first. Are you worried at all that that might be overshadowed, the fact of, you know, the trend in, in, the, in the past? Yo, I feel like if I do what I'm supposed to do, people are going to look back like, man, Dude, remember dude used to just make beats for people? You talk about, like, I, I, I'm trying to get to the point where I could drop my last name off my name. You know what I'm saying? Seriously. Like, I don't want to jinx myself or nothing, but I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity. Like, I got some songs, I got some stuff in my heart that the world need to hear. And I sit, I think about what I'm doing. Like, I figure, like, okay, I want to express this message, but... Maybe I might have to get another artist on it and place it like this and put it in this vein. Like I'm not just gonna step out and just be like, yo, just look at everything I have right now and then the world not accept it. I gotta put it in a way that the world will accept it and then develop it into being an artist. And when you see me on stage, like a lot of times, I feel like I'm very animated, I'm very emotional because what I say means so much to me that eventually the people are, are gonna have to accept it. 
it, and as being a producer, yeah, a couple people know me as a producer, but I'm not that big as a producer. I'm not even gonna fool myself. I got a couple hits, but tomorrow's not promised. So I'm still taking a sacrifice. Like I could look at it, like I got some beats that's so blazing on my album that I could look at it if I, in some way, was to fail and say, man, why don't I just get this beat to DMX? And why don't I just get that beat to Hov? And why don't I just follow the producer path? So it's once again at a point in my life where I have to step away from something I'm doing or retreat in order to follow what my dreams really are. Because you can't win the war. You, you can't fight every battle and win the war. Sometimes you have to retreat mm -hmm. and then come back. You know what I'm saying? I've already taken a, a loss like I'm not selling as many beats as I used to sell because I'm sitting up here trying to think of raps and stuff. I mean, but I gotta follow my heart, man. Everybody look at it and say, yo, man, he crazy, man. He trying to rap, man. What's wrong? He's stupid, he's trying to rap. Yo, I, I can't let I can't react to that, but I'm thinking of how people just told me I was stupid for trying to rap. And now, now, now I'm up here on MTV, you here first. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it, it feel good right now, man. It's like how do you how do you how do you deal with uh like you know keeping keeping it out there that you got that you have top tracks you know but at the same time saving some of your best material for yourself? Man, that's one of the hardest parts right there. Depending on are you gonna say this be for yourself or you gonna try to give it to somebody else? This is what I do. This is the truth of the matter. I take every beat that I think is hot and I try to rap on it first. If it don't come out hot, then I give it to somebody else. Except if we in the process of working on somebody's album, like okay, say, if we working on a blueprint too, I might, even before I fathom rapping on it, I might bring it to Jay. I bring it to the top caliber rappers. Then I try to rap on it. Then I play it for everybody else, you know what I'm saying? People, it, people always be saying, no, see, you, you be giving me your best beats away. Nah, man. I feel like sometimes people don't even rap on my best beats. Like when my album comes out, it's beats that are two years old, and people are like, yo, you were saving that beat. I'm like, nah, man, I played that for everybody. Sometimes people just have to see it in song form and have to hear it on the radio. I remember the truth. People was dissing the truth so much. Like, and then when it came out, people was like, yo, man, what up with that, man? I remember I was just sending people, they was like, man, dog, send me the heat, man. Send me the heat. Why are you sending me this? And how do you, another thing as far as being a producer, how do you get, what is like the, uh, I would say, what is the, like the, the difference is like with you being in a session with Jay as opposed to you being in a session with like most or Tyler? Man, everybody got their style of rapping. I'm telling you, most and Jay both will spit they stuff real fast. They real proficient. Like it's people that I've done beats for where I actually didn't get to be in a session with them, where they send it out. I'm telling you, you looking at you here first, real. This is not the producer standpoint of a Dre or a Timberland that's up to there. Like it's not sweet like that yet. It's still for the love to a certain extent, you know what I'm saying? So everybody try to tell me like, yo man, when you get on TV, man, you gotta personify something more than where you are. But I'm gonna always walk in the steps that I'm at right there. And hopefully one day I'll be to the point where I can say, like a Dre or Timberland, like, yo, I just work with every single artist that I ever did a beat for. But I know working with Jay definitely can spoil a producer because it's, it's no work at all other than to play your beat. And next thing you know, you got a hit song on the radio. That's why Just, man, smart, man. He was like, man, I'm not gonna try to go out and find no new rappers. I got Cam, Bleak, Beanie, Hove, Freeway, Young Chris. Like, why why do I need to go develop an artist? If I got already developed artists, I'm getting money like how I'm supposed to do anyway, you know what I'm saying? And what do you think about just as far as like, you know, as far as a producer? Like, okay. Isn't, isn't he one of the people who inspired you to move here? Yo, just you said, I remember one time I was uh, working on a demo in my crib for $500 for somebody in my crib that I didn't even want to be in my house. You know what I'm saying? But I had to, it was something, you know what I'm saying, that I needed. I wanted to get a pelly off layaway or something, so I was trying to, I'm doing demos for $500 and they in the back room recording. Whack. Terrible. And I'm talking to Just on the phone. He's like, yeah, yo, yeah, so whatever. Um, dog, I gotta go, man. I think that's Buster right behind me. I'm like, yo. 
I need to get out there, man. What, the, what am I doing, man? I'm here. He over there doing beats for Busters. I'm doing beats for Busters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Recently too, we did a you know, and this is something else, and I'm sure because we spoke to hip hop about it. This is something else that people go through, you know, where more than one artist gets trapped. You know, Cam was saying that originally Ace to Izzo was his joint, but you originally approached him for it. So what you want me to say about it? No, nah, I'm just you know, <laughs> just trying to hear from your side. <clears throat> oh, just like a Shaheen move right there. Or, this is a Shaheen move right there. No, it's your boy Shaheen who is the cause. You see it on DVD, DV, DVD, and the future. No, I mean, you don't even have to specifically address mm. that. You know, I mean, like, but is that something that happens all the time? Okay, I'll just I'll talk future. about you. Okay, a lot of times with beats, man, people will be acting like the beats is gonna be there for them. You know what I'm saying? Like a beat is not sold until the check clears. Period. Unless you hove. Or Scarface, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's always, it's always exceptions, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hold a beat for Jay. Like, yo, I leave this beat in my will. <laughs> he told me he was going to rap on it, so I'm still holding it. But as far as, like, just in general, man, it's like, if you don't pay for the beat, it might be gone. It's like, beats is like they in a store, you know what I'm saying? Like, say you go... Whatever, like you go to Mitchell and Les and, and you tell them, yo, man, hold this but crazy throwback that don't nobody got that I will be killing the club. I kill the club with this right here. Just hold this for me. I'll be back tomorrow. So you hold it for them till tomorrow. Then you hold it two weeks. Then you hold it three weeks. Then you sell it. And it's like, yo, you don't remember you did that beat? Like, oh, man, it's a store, man. It's a business. It's for the love of hip hop. So if I love the artist, the more and more I love the artist, the more leeway I give him. You know what I'm saying? I love Scarface, Hove, Cry Most. I used to, I grew up off Feral Monsters stuff. Like um, Organized Confusion, the second album, that was like one of my favorite albums. Souls of Mischief, Far Side, um, Common. So me. Do you, do you want me to talk about producers? Any producers well, we, I like? Know, I don't know. Yeah. To the other room, so okay. Maybe if you want, you could talk more about like things like who you work with and you know the project. Seeing that you're gonna be writing the booth. Okay. So that was cool. You're gonna work with other producers at all? Um. Yes, it's here. Um. Um, that's like my trademark to say. Um. Um. I don't mean no harm. Your boy Young K got a mean no um. Man, as far as working with other producers, it's a lot of people that I wish I had the opportunity to rap on their beats. I feel like this first project, I'm going to do at least 99% of it because I want to prove to the world that I could do a whole album. You know what I'm saying? Like how Dre got, they op got his opportunity, Timberland, Neptunes. Yeah. And in order to get on that level, you had to take an artist and prove that you could produce a whole project, singles, and be successful with that. And success is not just getting... You know, I'm trying to speak in bites. Hold on. <laughs> well, don't think about it. No, don't, don't think about it. Think yeah. We can uh, yeah. this stuff and we yeah. can tell you later. Yeah. Like, we'll give Janet to uh, like, take this. Well. Okay. As far as working with other producers, there's a lot of producers I respect, like Timbaland and Dre, Just, Bink. But on this project right here, I'm finna do 99% because I had to prove myself as a producer that I could take an artist being myself. I like to congratulate myself. <laughs> Hold on, wait a second. That's one of my favorite quotes that I like to congratulate myself. Allow myself to introduce myself. Hold on, okay, I'll start right there. Allow myself to introduce myself. This is Kanye to the... As far as dealing with other producers, there's a lot of producers I respect. Timberland, Dre, Bink, Just Blaze. I, I can name them off. Primo, Pete Rock. But on this project right here, I'm going to do 99% of it because I feel like I really got to prove to the world that I could do a whole project and it'd be successful. And it just so happened that the project is me, myself. So I'm going to definitely give myself some bangers, some heat rocks. Like, 
Cool. Is that good? Yeah. yeah. Well, also, too, if you could just tell us, like, where we, like, where we are, you know, and just, you know, tell us a couple of the hits that, that we're going to do. Okay. Right now, we are sitting in Baseline Studios. We got young Guru in the house. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not official to you say Guru's in the house. I'm just really thugging it out, ain't I? Okay, right now, <laughs> right now we're in Baseline Studio. It's the home of hip hop right now, of basically cutting edge hip hop. This is the home of the streets, of the radio, of everything that. It's basically what everything that everybody is trying to do right now. And this is where it all starts right here. This is where we did the the reason for Beanie Siegel. This is where we did the Blueprint, the new Freeway album. This is where the Heat Rocks of Cameron album was done. And um, also, this is where we're going to be doing the Kanye West project. Did you see I ended that off without it like going into another yeah, sentence and shit? Um, yeah. <laughs> Kanye's doing an interview right now. We can't take any calls back here. All right. I just tell him I call him back. Okay. And as far as like who's gonna, how many tracks have you done, and who are your guests and things like that? Talk um, about the album a little bit. Yeah, I'm basically completed the album. I'm just in certain little heat rocks here and there. Whatever I come up with this new is just that I feel from my heart needs to be heard. But it's a lot of stuff that the whole album is gonna get heard eventually, even if stuff doesn't make this album because. Everything is something that the world needs to hear. And I added features of people just that I work with and I admire and I love, like Scarface, Ludacris, Twister. Man, how am I like forgetting some of my features? I know I have a lot of features. Most Def, yo. Most Def and Freeway, Quali. Like, I got a lot of people, real lyricists, that's respected. Like, I want to place myself next to these. It's not a matter of, okay, I'm going to go get out who, who's ever selling the most records as an attempt to sell records. Like, as far as this album, I feel like y'all going to get something realer. Okay, hold on. As far as this album, I feel like you're going to get something that's truly real because if it didn't work... I could still eat off of doing beats. So I'm not pressed to impress an A&R by saying, yo, I'm gonna get uh, the right singer and the right tempo on this day, and I gotta get the jump off. Like, I'm just trying to do something to give back to my people. I want the same people that love Tribe Called Quest and Mob Deep and Nas and Jay-Z first album to hear my shit and be like, dog, that's some real shit. This ain't no just trying to be on a radio type shit. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully I get radio, I, I pray that the people love it, but this is for y'all. Was that within 30 seconds right there? That was good. What? Don't speak about it. I don't want you to stop and think. You know, I need to second guess your answers or anything. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? But I want it to, you know, just talk naturally. Okay. Can you show us your tattoo on your arm and talk about it a little bit? Oh, yeah, y'all got to see that. Hold on, let me take this off. Yo, first of all, I want to say, what is this right here? Who who finna put their thumb through this? Like, y'all can't be serious. Just put this. <laughs> he's gonna roll this one right up. This shirt is not young, really. It's it's an optical illusion because I've been, you know, what I'm saying to the gym. I mean, I'm a little. I just see the Scotty Pippen right there. <laughs> okay. This right here. This tap mean a lot to me. I put a lot of the songs on here that's changed my life or just it means something at a point in my career. That way when we in a when my family's in a million dollar home and they look back and they say, Dad, why you got why well, I can't get no tattoos? Why you got that tattoo? I'll be like, look, this tattoo is the reason why we here, why we are right here now. It start off and say, You made me. Everything in this tattoo can be spoken in a sentence form. It's not just songs, it's stuff that means stuff to me. Like, you made me. This is my life right here, it's so ghetto. I always speak the truth. People always say that I'm a very truthful person. This can't be life. It can't be life that I'm sitting right here right now. Cause back when I was in seventh grade, I wouldn't have ever fathomed really being on this side of the screen. It's nothing like it. I try to make my music where it's nothing like what I do. And a lot of times, I lose out because of that, because I'm always trying to be so creative that sometimes I can create something and a whole bunch of people can go wrong with it and make a lot of money off of it. But I'm feeling like I want to get a public something new. So 
it's like other people capitalize off of it. And I, I just hope that's not my downfall. I hope that I can just keep creating. This right here, Izzo, the anthem. Now y'all know what that is. That definitely was a, a groundbreaking record for me. My first Grammy nominated record. Hey mama, this is my first Grammy award winning record right here. Well, it hasn't won a Grammy yet, but just keep this on foul. Right here. Heart of the city, I do my music for the heart of the city and it's from the heart of the city. And after whatever happens, I never change. What's gonna happen in the future? You made that scroll kind of small. You gonna fill up everything else, or is that just signifies the beginning? Okay. People always ask me, what's gonna happen like once I make more hits? I've made plenty of hits other than these songs on here, but what I'm telling you at this point is I never change. Like I said, these are songs that I did do, but this is a scroll of my life. A lot of rules that I follow. Cool. Um. One more question, then I don't know if you have anything else that I want to play a couple more tracks. And, um, are you going to clear that Lauryn Hill sample? Are you going to try to? Okay, or well. just like for fun? Nah, it's, it's for life. You know what I'm saying? I gotta, I'm trying to go to the Commissioner Gordon. I went to Dead Press. I'm going to all the people that I know that know her, that are cool with her. And I'm basically, I'm just go to her and I'm perform it. I'm going to tell her my, what my whole movement is and a lot of stuff that I'm trying to touch on. And I'm, I'm going to be like, Miss Hill, can you please clear this for me? And not that I'm just going to do it at shows. That's cool. She's usually cool with positive stuff, so I'm going to ask her. Um, all right, so if we could just, like, have you, like, you play a track, and I know it's phony producer type stuff, and then maybe if you want to, um, if we could get you, like, in a track that you know real well, or if you want to test it, if we could have you, like, maybe in the booth, like, you know what? Like, I don't record in the booth. You don't record in the booth? Oh. Nah, I press record with the mic like this, and then spit it. So that would be like, that would I love it.